Next topic is me, so it's easy for me to stay up here. Uh, and basically, it's just the end of life on uh, a lot of different products. Some of this is old news, and I'm giving you old information in a new year. But we've already heard one of our customers say that he has all that stuff. I didn't think about it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we'll start with analyzers because that's the easiest one. The 951C analyzer and older are no longer supported. I say older because we just replaced the 951A last year. Uh, I don't know how old that brand, tell me how old that is. That's before my time, I've been in 25 years. So. Yeah, it's been a long time. So uh, the 951A analyzer is no longer supported. <laughs> But the 951Cs aren't either. We, uh, in a weaker moment, uh, we bought back a bunch of old 951Cs from some customers. Some of them were still brand new, never been used, uh, still in the box. And uh, so we use those as spare parts. So if you happen to have a 951C and you don't have the budget to change it up, we probably can limp along for another year or so. After that, we probably aren't gonna have any parts either. We know we can get them from Rosemont, but uh, we definitely um, don't have parts uh, after about a year or so. We'll run out of parts as well. So we just fixed one the other day. It was just Saturday. Saturday. It was overnighted to us for a Saturday repair and a Saturday back to the site. We did that. We had a bunch of people were in the office working on it uh, to make sure it got taken care of. And, uh, there's a lot of logistics for you have to repair the analyzer, but then you have to ship it and receive it and do all the other stuff that goes with it. So it's uh, a lot more than just one, one person. Uh, the Rosemont MGA MLT CLDs, depending upon which version you have, technically Rosemont says they still support it, but I'm told by the plants that have those, not very well. So uh, on a technical basis, they're still supported, but on a real reality basis, they don't. So if you have those, it's time to budget to get rid of them. Uh, they're a multi-component analyzer, which means, not really in the true sense, they have all the componentry measured in three different boxes, but the, they all go into a central brain, I guess is the best way of putting that. And so replacing them is sometimes unique because the newer analyzers, the Thermos, the Teledyne, the CAIs, the Servomax, the Siemens, whatever else you're putting in, are all in big boxes. And so you might have an analyzer that takes up two shelves of a rack, and we're going to have to put in four different analyzers into a rack, and that's a challenge. But that's the next part of the discussion after this. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, that one's one that we would probably get rid of as well. So if you have those, uh, I suggest moving on. Uh, Siemens uh, announced two years ago the release of the 7 Series, but the last time I asked them for pricing on the 6 Series, they didn't have any problem giving it to me and selling me a 60 without question. So I'm not real sure where they are on the 7 Series. Uh, I know they're technically available, but Siemens is taking forever to show up with an analyzer anyway. So. Uh, We'll see what happens. So you can still order the Ultramat and Oxmat 60s uh, if you want them, they're still available. Uh, not sure about their other series, but I know the 7 series has been announced, it's out there, and you can probably order it. We, have, we do not have any out in, in the field, but we have put in 7 series Siemens out there uh, a lot. Uh, Servomex, uh, we have just taken delivery, of, or about to take delivery, I think, any day now of a 1440D, so they're still being manufactured. However, they told me recently that one of the major components inside of this box is no longer being supported or supplied to them. So when they run out of their stock, that analyzer is no longer available. Uh, but we had a customer that insists they got the 1440D, not the 4900, which is the more recent version uh, of the analyzer from Servomax. So if you're a Servomax fan, the new analyzers are the 4900s, and you can get that version if you want. We did sell some of those to one of our customers. 
They're not as easy as the old 14 core <laughs> turbo maxes. They're, they're a little more hard, difficult to set up, and the guys aren't going to go crazy about it, but uh, they work. That's not the problem. It's, they're not as easy to work on. Uh, and CAI, I, I think I mentioned this last time, they're now selling the 7 Series. We've sold 7 Series CAIs. Uh, we have them in the field. The only difference that I talked to CAI about this is all the internal components on the analyzer uh, are all actually interchangeable. So if you have a 6 Series and it breaks and you put it on the shelf, but some of the components work and you get a 7 Series and it needs a part, you can probably steal that part from the 6 Series. Because really, it's just the cosmetics that changed on the analyzer because they bought it this time. I don't know. We don't do a lot of CAI, but I just want to let you know we do have enough out there that uh, we support them and we have uh, we repair them. We don't stock their parts as much, but because uh, we just don't have as many on the field. Well, that's interesting. Well, you get my pricing before you get the rest. Of it. That's okay. Uh, the C-Series analyzers from Thermos, I shouldn't have to say this, but they're no longer supported. You can't get parts for them. So you shouldn't have them. But if you do, and believe it or not, people do, they still have those on 951A. Uh, they're time to get rid of them because we can't support them. We can't get parts for them. We can't do anything with the C-Series. Uh, the I-Series is still supported by Thermo, according to them. They said they would support it 10 years. So you have five and a half years left until that support stops, and I know Thermo, they will stop at that point. They won't support it anymore with parts or any other pieces to the I-Series. I know there's a lot of I-Series analyzers out there, uh, but that's not there. Their replacement to that is the IQ-Series, uh, which I always found to be a weird name because it says 42 IQ. And that just seems a little odd to me, or 48 IQ. Uh, but that's their, uh, that's their latest offering. People ask me on the pricing. As of yesterday, those are the prices we would sell you the box for. And I'm going to be very cautious on that because if you buy the box, that doesn't mean it's set up. That doesn't mean it's ready to go. That doesn't mean it's installed in your rack. That doesn't. There's a lot of things going on with that. So. Uh, the caveat to that is those are approximate prices that are not actually installed in your system. That's what we'll sell you the box for. Okay, And if you have the ability to set it up, we will program it for that price. We'll program that for you ready to go, but then you have to put it in your rack and set it up. And if you want us to come out and your rack's not ready or it doesn't have the slides in the right spot or you're going from a Rosemont to a thermo, then all of a sudden you have to change the depth because Rosemonts are nine inches deep, 19 inches deep, excuse me, and thermos are 40, how long? 28 inches? 24? I don't know, they're a lot deeper. And so they take an extra support bar and some other things to go with that. So there's a lot more involved than just that. So I'm guessing that my next slide is also going to put the pricing on Teledyne's up there. So, uh, We'll send out the, you don't have to write all this down, I mean, you can write it down if you want to, but we're going to send all these out uh, probably tomorrow. I'll send the PDFs of all these slides so you'll have this information uh, with you uh, when you get back to your uh, headquarters, wherever that is. Okay. Uh, I talked to Teledyne yesterday and uh, just to verify my information on not this, but on the T series, but they said, Please, please, if you have an E-Series analyzer, they technically still support it, but they're having trouble keeping or finding parts for them themselves. And so they ask you to get rid of the E-Series and move on uh, to the others. And that's the T-Series. The T-Series analyzers are the T200s, the T300s, the T100s, depending on where you are and what kind of analyzer you have. I've only put the most common ones down here, the Knox and the CO. Uh, obviously, Austin's going to say, but I have an SO2. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we have those two. We have an SO2 analyzer sitting on the shelf in the T100. Uh, but uh, the T series analyzers uh, are still supported, they're still manufactured. And as of yesterday, according to Teledyne, they have no end date for the manufacturing date. 
and they will support the analyzer for 10 years after the end date of manufacturing. So you have at least 10 years, probably 11 or 12 before they're going to stop the T-Series altogether. So they haven't gotten to that point yet. It's being replaced by the N-Series. Uh, Ray alluded to that earlier, what the N-Series was all about. It's, the internal guts are more componentry based, which means you pull out a board and put in a board, you pull out a board and put in another board. So it's a lot faster to change, but it's a lot harder to troubleshoot a bunch of things. Uh, but that's the N-Series. They still have the same software, the new review software on the front panel of that. Uh, if you're familiar, analyzers by color, the T-Series was blue and the N-Series is black. I don't know what that means, but that's what it is. Uh, we, if you want to be a guinea pig, we have not sold an N-Series analyzer. There are available today. I can order them tomorrow. I can order them this afternoon. Uh, we can have them here in four to six weeks. And if you want to be a guinea pig and put an N-Series, let me know. I'll be happy to sell you one, but you have to know that you would be the first uh, to get one of those analyzers So from us. Now, there might be other people putting out there, but we haven't done it yet. So, again, the pricing below is uh, approximate. That's what the box costs. Set up and ready to go for your site, but you would have to do the installation and all the other stuff that goes with it. Ray talked about this er earlier, and I'll talk about it again. It's hard to reiterate the same points over and over and over again, but they seem to be questions over and over and over again. And that is the Rosemont analyzers, both the NGA and MLTs, they have one output for each, for the, for the NOx, one output for CO, one output. And then the ranges are changed uh, inside, and there's a range relay output on that. But on all of these analyzers, the thermos, the teledynes, you're going to get two outputs for dual range analyzers. So you have to have space in your PLC in order to handle that. And that may not seem like a big deal, but if you have a SLC PLC, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, and you're out of analog input modules, <laughs> you just added a lot of expense to those dollars down there. And I'll tell you about that next. Uh, well, let's talk about GE PLCs. 9030 uh, foot nut analyzer is no longer supported, but it has to be replaced with the RX3i, and there's another note to that. GE doesn't own the PLCs anymore. They sold their PLC division, their controls division, over to Emerson. So they are now Emerson RX3Is, not GE RX3Is. So if you have a GE PLC and you want a replacement part, they're fully supported. That's not a problem. You can get the parts, but they're now Emerson IO modules and Emerson RX3Is. Just so you're aware. The software was also sold, so the it's not here to bail me out on what's the name of the software for the, for the GE PLCs or the Emerson PLCs. I can't remember. Machine edition. Machine edition software went over to Emerson as well. So it, it, that still works. So it's still there. Uh, there are some differences in the uh, models in which you order when you order a GE PLC. So you might want to check what you have. Uh, but the there's a CPU module and then there's a CPE module, okay? And the difference in those really is that the CPU module has a, a battery RAM, it has a battery for the backup on the RAM. The battery will run out and it runs out rather quickly and you lose all of your programming as soon as it's gone. So as soon as that battery is dead, if you lose power, if your plant cycles and you lose power to your PLCs occasionally, What's going to happen is that battery is going to run out of juice and you're going to run out of your program. And then it has to get reloaded and refired, and there's all sorts of other problems that go with that. So you have a problem with that. So you want to avoid that model if you can and switch out to the CPE module. There's also another advantage on the CPE module. The CPE module, uh, or processor, excuse me, the CPE processor uh, also has an Ethernet port built in, so it saves you a little bit. So you don't have to buy a separate Ethernet port on that if you have a GDPLC. Okay, but 
Have we delivered a GEPLC in a while? It's been a, well, yeah, we have, we're working with Southern Cal Edison. Yeah, we're doing Southern Cal Edison having some upgrades, so we have those. Yeah, so we have a few others, but they're there. On the Allen Bradley PLC side, uh, the SLCs are no longer supported. And when I say that, could you still buy parts for an SLC PLC? Sure. You want to buy an analog input module, it'll cost you about $8,500. They used to sell for about $450. Okay? You can buy an entire rack of a compact logic for about that same price. And that's CPU and Ethernet module and the whole thing. So you have, that's how they get rid of it. But they're running out of those parts too. And so with the, uh, the SLCs, if you have those in your system, it's not going to be much longer that we can't help you. And if you need changes or if you need additions or there's stuff going on with the SLCs, uh, and that's the 503s, the 504s, the 505s. It doesn't matter what kind. Of, and the only difference between the, the major difference between the 503, 504, and 505 is communication protocol. Okay, so one's DH plus and one's uh, either, either 505s or Ethernet. I'm missing one somewhere. Uh, PLC fives are also uh, no more. We still have a few PLC fives running out there at a few plants. Uh, they were powerful PLCs back in the day, but they're monsters, big, tall, giant things about the size of this speaker up here, uh, and the big racks that are they go in. Uh, but those are no longer supported either. They're very expensive to get parts for. You can still probably buy them on eBay somewhere out there, but. Uh, everything's being replaced with compact logics and control life. So you really need to, if you have a PLC-5, if you have a select uh, SLC, uh, 503, 504, 505, you need to get rid of those and start considering moving on. <clears throat> there are two versions of the compact logics out there for sale right now and fully supported. You can buy either one. We sell them both, and we sell them both for various reasons. If your plant is expanding and you already have an older Compact Logix uh, model, then we will sell you that older Compact, mod, compact Logix uh, model so that you'll have commonality of parts because the parts don't jive with each other. I don't like the fact that they named them both Compact Logix. But they, did. they did give them different numbers. Uh, so one is the 1769, that's the older version, and the 5069 is the newer version. If you call up Alan Bradley, they'll give you completely different numbers than those, but they'll give you those numbers too. And I had a discussion with them one time about why they had the two different numbers, and they said, that's just who we are. <laughs> Seriously, what they said. I'm not making that up. Uh, the average price of a compact logics rack and I just took a system with one analog input module, a couple of analog output modules, a couple of digital ins, digital outs, relay out. I just put together a quick system, and it's about uh, $10,000 for that. So if you're looking to replace an SLC and you want to know about what it's going to cost for the hardware portion, that doesn't count programming, it. that's just the hardware portion, it's about $10,000 for a compact logic. Okay? And Compact Logics does everything you probably need it to do. Because somebody's going to say, well, what about the control logics? Well, I'll bring that up next. The control logics for the exact same rack, I priced these yesterday, uh, for the exact same rack on a Compact Logics is about $25,000. And that is without redundancy. Okay? So I'll tell you the advantages of the control logics. Control logics have a little bit more firepower. For sure, the bigger, stronger processors, all that. Uh, and they allow redundancy for fails. So you could have redundant power supplies, you could have redundant CPUs. So if one of them fails, the other one takes over, back and forth, they go. You could do that if it's really, really important for you to have that. Some of our customers want that. I will tell you that that $25,000 price tag doesn't just double. It's about two and a half times, maybe three times that price because 
you not only have to buy a power supply for each module, you also have to buy a redundancy module and a third power supply to go along with that. You also have to buy a back plane. There's a lot more to it. So in order to get redundancy out of the Control Logics uh, PLCs, you spend a lot of money. So Compact Logics does not allow redundancy of any kind. Okay? There's no, you just don't have that option. Okay? But as Gary pointed out in the spare parts discussion, we've had a few modules fail. And let, I've been 25 years, you've been 30 some years. So maybe the CPU has failed twice in my time. It just doesn't happen. I mean, so yes, I understand the redundancy, but no, I don't understand the redundancy for a sense. It's not critical to your infrastructure. Creating power, it's for your sons. I'm not downplaying what we do, what I do for a living, but at the same time, the redundancy is probably not needed. Uh, but if that's your standard, that's great. We'll happy to sell it to you. Uh, it works. OITs and HMI panels. This one's a tough one for me to even talk about uh, because I don't understand them all. That's I, I'm a software guy. I used to run the software side of the company. So, maple panels, uh, most are obsolete. So, if you have a maple panel in your system, it's probably obsolete. It was probably obsolete when it was put in your system uh, because that's how fast they go through them. They're still manufactured. They're still, maple's still a big product manufacturer of OITs. Uh, you can still get them. But they change out their software regularly, they change out their, their how their interface works, how their touch screens work, how the old ones didn't have touch screens, they had buttons next to a video display screen. So depending on what you have, if you have a maple panel, it's probably outdated. Okay. Uh, panel view 550s are obsolete. So if you have a panel view 550, it's not gonna work if you need any changes made. We can't make any changes to them, we can't program them, we can't do anything with them, so you're gonna replace it. Uh, you can get into the panel view plus systems, you can get into those, but generally speaking, the Allen Bradley, panel view, by the way, is an Allen Bradley product. So if you go down the Allen Bradley product line, uh, they're a little more expensive, they're good at panels, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, but they obsolete themselves pretty quickly, and many of the older programs are not compatible with the newer models. So if you have a panel view 600 as an example, and you program it and everything's working great and then the panel dies and they don't make the 600 anymore and now you have to go to a newer version then that program that we had in the 600 probably won't work in the new panel we have to reprogram it all over again that's one of alan bradley's things i don't know why but that's how it works so uh panel view uh 550s are no longer uh available automation direct is one that we sell probably the most of, yeah, either the panel view plus or, uh, or the automation drag. Uh, it's probably the most cost effective option. Uh, it's a pretty good panel. It is a little more friendly as far as backward compatibility. If you get a new panel, the old program will probably load most of the time into the new panel. They seem to have a better handle on upgrading the software side of things and working on that. Uh, but it is a problem, so you have to keep track of that. Um, the if you have an Emerson GE RX3i, it doesn't play well with others. So it doesn't like automation direct. It doesn't like panel view pluses. It doesn't like panel views at all. It only likes GE or Emerson OIT panels. So. That's pretty much what you're going to have to go. You're going to have to go to a uh, GE Emerson panel if you have an RX3. We've made a push in uh, recent years to go with what we call a real view. A real view is a computer based system. And you, you have a computer that typically sits on a desktop in your, in your uh, sun shelter, and you have full functionality of what happens with the just like a touch panel. You can take the system out of service, uh, call up the analyzer, enter the analyzer information, get the alarm data, get everything you want in the touch panel in the, in the system. It's there just like an OIT panel. 
And so we've had the real view software out for quite some time. More recently, we've switched over and used a lot more panel PCs. Len had a picture of our training shelter, and if you noticed on the wall, it had a panel PC in the end of that rack. And it's a fully functional computer built into a panel. It's a panel PC, that's what we call it. So it's just a personal computer that's in a panel. As a touch screen, we also connected a keyboard in there, I think, as well. Uh, because some people don't like the touch screens as much as they like the keyboard and mouse, so it's, it's in there too. But it has a touch screen. So the panel PCs and the real view seem to be a, general, a direction we're trying to go more and more. We have full control over that because we program those with our own software, with our own uh, real view software. We aren't reliant on what Alan Bradley puts out or some of the other, or Emerson or any of the other companies, Automation Direct. We control that real view. Most people like our real views better than they like the panels. So I would suggest that. And there isn't much of a price differential. To be perfectly honest, they're about the same price. So it might even be a little cheaper uh, to go with the panel PCs and real view than it is to go with a uh, panel view plus. So if you go the Allen Bradley route, they're probably a little more expensive. Automation Direct is probably a little cheaper. So we're somewhere in the middle in there as far as pricing goes on the panel PCs and their touch screens, real views, they work. And they'll work with the RX 3 eyes as well, by the way. They work just fine. So there's no compatibility issue on that. Okay, here's the big one. If anybody in the room still has Cedar 4, no longer supported. Now, what does that mean? The Cedar 4 is no longer supported. Okay? Basically, any version of Cedar, starting with Cedar 5, so Cedar 5, Cedar 6, and Cedar 7, and any of the sub-versions thereof, those are the major version revisions of the software, all use a SQL Server database. Cedar 4 uses an MS Access database. Okay? That was written back in, uh, I think our first release was in 1998. So the first release of Cedar was back in 1998. We used Access Database, and we used it for quite a few years. And then we switched over to the Cedar 5 format, and it's SQL Server. So if you have Cedar 4, and you need a change to your program, now, if your program's running, and your plant's cooking along just fine, we don't have any problems, Cedar 4 will still work. There's nothing wrong with it. The database does have a max capacity, so you have to purge your database clearly occasionally. And, uh, do all that compacted uh, that goes with that. But if you need changes that, excuse me, to reports or screens or new limits or something like that, or a major revision comes out, you have a new permit, uh, you'll have to switch over to the Cedar 7 software package. Uh, and when we switch over to Cedar 7, it's also an added cost because we have to have SQL Server database, and there's database transfers. We will transfer your old data. We have a utility that will transfer your data from Cedar 4 to Cedar 7. Uh, this utility happens fairly quickly. Uh, you, you'll probably need a new PC, but not necessarily. It depends on what you have on it currently. But Cedar 4 is no longer supported by us, and, and so you have to switch out to the Cedar 7. So if you haven't done that, we have 31 known sites out there that still have Cedar 4. So we know there's at least 30 some sites out there that are still running it. And, which is good that it's still running, but uh, we really need to change that out. Uh, and that's just what I just said. 